Scrapped up. Oh yeah. Where's Jason when you need him? I don't know, where is Jason? It is another beautiful day in Bryson City, North Carolina. Kind of rainy today, cloudy. But that is not gonna stop us from working. Today we're working inside, cleaning the house, getting rid of all of the junk wood, getting everything that belongs to me out of here because the spray foam insulation crew is coming in a couple days and I need to have this house clean, spick and span, nothing in their way so they can get their job done easy. And I want the house to be really clean when they get here so that hopefully when they leave, they'll think it should be really clean too. Also, we're putting up some tongue and groove wood on the porch ceiling. Arlo and Ray are gonna be tackling that. So we'll get a little peek about what's going on there. Ceiling with no finish, pile of wood. It's kind of a no-brainer really, right, Ray? Oh yeah. I'm just glad I get to wear my tool belt today. Oh yeah? Yeah. Well, you got your painting shirt on. It's almost like you're just asking to paint. Uh, it's raining, we can't paint. Where's Jason? Sleeping in somewhere for sure. I guarantee it. <laughs> so Arlo has made a cool little walk plank here. Mm -hmm. This ceiling is low, like eight feet, so this is just right. Definitely the dark line. He's gone to the dark line. It's, it's the big dark line. Any good straight ceiling installation here starts with a nice straight chalk line. Oh, here we are, Randy. Oh, man, you scared don't, me. Don't get on the same plane, Randy. Oh, yeah. We're face nail on this stuff because the tongue on this is tiny. Super tiny. We're not doing that. We're just going to face nail it. Bam. Right in the face. Right in the face. Some days it seems like all I do is move stuff. And if you're in construction, well, that's a big part of your job, moving stuff from where it is to where it needs to be. In my case today, I've hauled two loads of trash to the dumps, one load of metal recycle. I haul one load of saw horses and leftover construction stuff from a job site. Now I'm loading the trailer again with scaffolding to take it down to my main street job. And literally I have moved stuff all day long and I am not done yet. So here we go. I'm not real sure what's wrong with my truck, but the brake lights are always on all the time. Even when you're not in the truck. <laughs> oh man. It's not a problem really, except you know that they're always on, but unless you're using trailer brakes because when the light is on, your trailer brakes think they should be on. So that's a problem. As you can see behind me here, the ceiling material has been installed. This is some over 100 year old tongue and groove that was recovered out of an old schoolhouse locally here in Bryson City area. So I'm very happy to have it reused in this house and it looks right because it is the right age and it has all those details like beat up spots and you know, kind of some uh, former use is evident so it really matches the house i'm super happy with it now we're going to trim out the edges of the ceiling and we're going to use some very simple cove molding this is about an inch and a half wide cove molding and it's just going to finish off the edges and make it look really nice It is looking so clean and actually, wow, heard that. It's actually looking really large in here now that all the stuff is out of here. We had a few temporary access holes cut down into the crawl space that we're gonna patch now with plywood because we need to be able to slide scaffolding around everywhere on the floor. And it'd really be bad if your scaffold leg went down that hole. So there's the scaffold. We need to gain access up here to the ceiling right now to begin to uh, be ready for the insulation. So here goes scaffold. These doors, I think most of these came out of this house. Maybe one or two I grabbed from another old house. We're gonna take them back to the shop and see which ones can actually be used. Load them up, Ray. Load them up, let's get them out of here. Look at that awesome screen door. Oh. Man, I'm gonna take that home yeah. and surprise my wife. She's gonna love it. Man. I'm gonna put it on my house front door baby front door screen door slap you can hear that thing slapping in the breeze it's gonna bring some of that old time feel to my house so uh 
Got all these stripped down. Ray actually made pretty light work of that, even though it was not a very easy task. And looky here, we've got this awesome pile of old door hardware. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I guess I'm gonna take it back to the shop. I'm probably not going to reuse any of it because it's all missing parts, but we can definitely look at it and learn some things about the way that old door hardware was put on and how it worked and such. And that in itself is interesting. Yale, made in USA, look at that. So it's pretty fun. Actually, you know, you could make all kinds of stuff out of these leftover parts, like these cool porcelain covered doorknobs and some of the brass or bronze hardware. Some of this is just really cool looking and it might be worth keeping around. Hey, let's get some coffee. Ooh. You mind? I'm down with that. Taking just a second to measure each door and write on the side of it, the dimensions here. So when I go to start picking doors for where they're gonna go, I can very easily see what the sizes are and see if I can use them. So there they are, they're gonna sit here for a while. When we laid these concrete block piers here, we used some regular blocks instead of cat block, or I'm sorry, not cat block, end block, corner block. This is a corner block. These blocks down here are not corner blocks. See, they have that big kind of U-shaped void. So what I've done here is I mixed up some mud, pretty dry, and I'm just smearing it in there and trying to make it stick. Right there is one that I've done. <clears throat> It'll get a little stucco later to make the appearance better. And there's one that I did. All right, so these people are laughing at me. Good thing they're my friends. It's a good thing my friends are laughing at me, not people I don't know. We love you too. All right, so I'm doing something kind of exciting right now, even though they're laughing at me. I just got a call saying that my delivery has come in. Oh, the sun is bad. I just got a call saying that my delivery of all the wood I'm gonna use to wrap the inside of my house, it's here, it's all here. It's about, oh, I don't know, 4,000 board feet of wood, all spruce. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go check it out here. I can't wait to see it. This is clank holes, clank holes? Binder holes. I don't know. Hey, where'd that come from? Uh, Germany. Germany. Hey, we're gonna put some German <laughs> German spruce. I'm excited. So that one's mine. The one at the very top. Wow. That one's mine. And then over here we got this other giant pile up top. Ooh, that's a lot of wood. Man, and just think, we gotta paint all these boards. All of them. I'm a sucker for some lumber, that's for sure. Taking my car this time, huh? Yeah. Take me to lunch, would you? All right, now we can actually get a real good look at what we got. German spruce, number two, common and better. HT, I don't know what the HT means. One by 12 by 12, so 120 pieces right there. Now we're going. Whoever came up with this idea is a genius. And up you go. Clunk. I see Arlo in there and Jono. There he is. Alrighty, guys. Let's see this thing happen here. There it is. Wow. I can't believe it. This is so amazing to see windows in this house. Look at that glass. Make sure to check back next week for episode 12, where 120 Man gets insulated. Also, Jamie and the guys tackle the massive project of finishing this 4,000 board feet of material and installing it as the interior finish at 120 Main. Make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. God, somebody give that guy a hand.